Good afternoon. A reminder to please turn off or silence in your electronic devices. Our meditation today, today we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday, Psalm 23, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters, he leads me to receive my drooping spirit. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these, you give me comfort. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. In a moment of silence, let us place ourselves in the presence of God. Please rise. Thank you. 
joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Apostles. Peter filled the Holy Spirit say, and said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means was he saved? Then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are saved. The word of the Lord. Amen. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in a man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my savior. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. I will give thanks to you for you have answered me and have been my savior. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his kindness endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what the Lord, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet, so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that he did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do not know when it is revealed, when he shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Remember Napoleon was coming to power, he 
in France and he subdued all the, the churches and whatnot. He, he imposed curfews out. He knew it was bad. And now he started, he took Pope Pius V captive and eventually killed him. But anyway, so he came into, from France into Austria, going through the Alps, Switzerland, and comes into Feldkirch. Feldkirch is on the westernmost part of Austria, one of the states of the west. So anyway, Easter Sunday morning. It's like they got up early in the morning, these French soldiers, bayonets and everything up there, you know, in their outfits with the big hats and all that. So there they come and circle Feldkirch. Now, there was a spy up there, and he had warned the townspeople, the French are coming, the French are coming. So they had a council meeting. They realized they couldn't do anything. They're overpowered. They, are, they, they, they couldn't do anything. So they said, let's rely upon God, and let's ring the church bells like never before, and have all the people come to church. There is like, and the Hitchcock sounds like, do, 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 do. It gets strong and strong. You could see all these soldiers coming, circling in, and all of a sudden, bing, 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 all the churches in town start ringing. Well, they didn't have phones in those days, and they couldn't understand what was going on. The French thought the Austrian army had arrived, and the people are jubilant now and ring the bells because the army had arrived and they got to decimate them, and all of us get out and left. The power of a church. The power of, it's not so much the bells, it is the power of the people. We just keep doing what we're doing, but in the name of God now. And they went to church, they celebrated Easter like never before. And it wasn't Easter, which could have been their death. So, a church is very important. And we hear this song, that church is one foundation. And we, Protestants sing it all the time. Mere church is one foundation, one church, one baptism, one Lord. They sing it all the time. They say the creed, one holy Catholic and apostolic church. But they don't believe it. Because then they would be Catholics. Christ came to establish this one church. One. Why would God come down from heaven undergo a cruel death just to say, oh, just be an atheist. You'll come to me anyway or a Buddhist, or a, a Protestant, for the matter of fact. If it's not the church Christ instituted, it's not the church of God. Simple as that. St. Paul, even as he traveled all the way around and came back, he submitted all, everything he had done to the church to see if it was good or not. If there was any question about anything, they all came down to Jerusalem and presented it to the, to the, to the apostles. It is this one church, and this one church ought to go forward. Like there is one church, and there's other ones I have to go to, the Gentiles. Bring them all into one, and then we start to worship, worship our God. There is this one church, even the Catechism talks about that. If a bishop today will tell you, it doesn't matter what you believe, you all get into heaven. Well, even if it's a bishop in white, they're wrong. Because the Catechism says so. 846. How to understand this affirmation, often repeated by the Church Fathers, reformulated positively, it means that all salvation comes from Christ, the head through the Church, which is His body. There is no salvation outside the Church. The Council of Trent put it down in writing. There is no salvation outside this one Church. One Church. So basing itself on Scripture and tradition, the Council, that's the Vatican Council too, teaches that the Church, a pilgrim now on earth, is necessary for salvation. For one Christ is the mediator and the way of salvation. He is present to us in his body, which is the Church. He himself explicitly asserted the necessity of faith and baptism, and thereby affirmed at the same time the necessity of the Church which men enter through baptism as through a door. Hence they could not be saved who, knowing that the Catholic Church was founded as necessary by God through Christ, would refuse either to enter into it or to remain in it. This affirmation is not aimed to those who, though no fault of their own, know Christ not in his church. So there is something about this church. This church in heaven is a triumphant church. 
they're just jubilant that they have made the race and they're praying for us down here on earth. Like you know there, Alberta, a man moved there with his family and it was like in fall and he could see some dark clouds or snow coming in and whatnot and he realized, uh-oh, there is trouble with my, my plumbing. And so he mentioned it to one neighbor and within an hour, the whole town, it wasn't a big one, but the whole town was there helping. He says, boy, I've never seen that before. He says, yeah, he says, we do this all the time because if we are up so far from, isolated from everybody else, if we don't help each other, we would die. And one day it'd be your turn that you need something, knowing that everybody would be there. This is what the Church of Christ is. The Church is the place of refuge. We hear of one another's sorrows and woes, and we stand with them, we help them, we, 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 whatever we can. We teach them. Even if people are of another faith, we are not just helping physically, but we must help them spiritually. Because there is only this one church. Why will Christ ask them to go and baptize them? A priest at a pastoral council with this, uh, with this group. And all of a sudden, it's like, you couldn't believe, wow, a bomb went off. No, it wasn't a bomb. And another one. The windows were hit with rocks. They realized that the pastor, young whippersnapper, got up and ran down the stairs, and everybody else behind him, the guys behind him, and around him. They saw the two kids. They start chasing after him. The kids disappeared on the corner. The pastor ran, but he was too fast. It was too little, too round. He really pulled it all the way down. But the other guys went in around the corner and caught these guys, brought them to the parents. Didn't call the police, but told the parents they would make restitution. But that night, the priest was thinking, he says, that's what it must feel like to protect the church like parents do so often for the children. You protect and guard. We do physical protection, but a spiritual protection is what is needed in our time. Satan is loose. I just read something about uh, Monsignor Octavio and his uh, God talked to him about priesthood and bishops and whatnot, and that was back in the 70s, and he wrote it down. It's quite an interesting thing. It's on our webpage. And he talked about how since the 60s they've taken away the weapons to defeat Satan. Everything was taken down. The prayers to the Blessed Mother, the prayer to St. Michael after Mass, everything was like, ah, we don't need them anymore because Satan really doesn't hurt us anymore. And now you can see what has happened. We have lowered our weapons, but he started to attack us even more fierce. Satan is alive. That's why Christ came into this church, into this world, because he knows. And we are destined for hell unless we are baptized and start to live a new life in Christ. That's what the Acts of the Apostles is all about, the scriptures, the catechism. It's about saving souls. Saving a soul means that one soul, even the worst murderer, the worst killer, is more worth spiritually than the whole of the universe, including all the gold and diamonds and everything else. One soul. Now just imagine God gave his life for this soul, and the soul says, I don't want to be saved. That will be absurd. But there are many people who don't say it in his words, but they do it in their actions, and by not thinking and not wanting to think about God. So when those who do talk about God, they are being silenced more and more. He needs us. Christ can come down from heaven and just fix everything. But he came to the world through Mary, a, a human. God allowed things to happen in the Old Testament through humans. He brought messages to the people. In our time, it is always through the instigation of help with another person. You and I wouldn't be here without a mom and dad doing, loving each other. But it takes people in order to bring about the kingdom of God, physically and spiritually. And this is a big, big, big thing which we have in our lives. Nothing counts for more. Because at the very end, you will not be asked what you did and what kind of car you drove, but how much did you love my son? Oh, I loved him a lot. Let me rephrase. How much did you lay down your life in service of others? That really is the key. 
knowing God, you have a responsibility to go into the world and preach the good news. People who err, bring them back into the faith. Protestants don't know that they have lost their path because they're not part of this one church. A one church, what is the difference between this one church and a Protestant? A Protestant, there's 40,000 denominations because each one believes something different. But yet we have this one church with the assurance that the teaching of God is present. Now we can take this truth, make it our own. Or we can reject it and we become a Protestant just like the rest. Or we become an atheist by saying, I don't, I don't believe there's a God. I can't know that there's a God. Well, we all do, because God has placed it in the hearts. The Vatican Council II talked about it. There is God has placed this thing within our hearts that seeks God. And you can just see it in this world by looking at cultures, because each culture desires to worship something. Why is that? It's because God has placed a spark of himself into that person. And this person seeks nothing but the true happiness and true love, which, who is God? Except if you don't have the scriptures and don't have revelation, you worship what you think is God. So you worship nature, which happens now so much. A council, a world culture, to heal nature, to make everything under the guise of, well, saving the world, save the earth. What about Jesus who saves? That's the key. He's given us the earth to use it in order to reach heaven. He came to save us, not the world. So everything is topsy-turvy. And if we're not grounded in the faith securely, we go astray and we miss the point. But we have to take up that faith seriously. We make it our own. And then become the staunch witness to truth wherever we go. That's all there is. That's the good news. Let us be stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born and Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God, true God, begotten God, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was in the army of the Virgin Mary, and he came there. For our sake, he was crucified and conscious of it. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no more. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and Lord of life, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We are thankful to our Heavenly Father for sending us the Shepherd, Jesus Christ. In his name we ask the following. We pray for the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. May it never waver from the mission Jesus gave her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for good and holy priests, bishops, and seminarians. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our good Lord reveal himself to all peoples, especially those who persecute him in, in, persecute him in his, the church. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. We pray for protection for our country, our families, and our properties. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all our sick and homebound, especially those who are asked who asked us for prayers and for those on our prayer chain. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now lift up our hearts with its desires in silence. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Lord, you gave us the church as our mother. We thank you and praise you for your kindness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Of his 
death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring unto the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Benedict XVI, our Pope Emeritus, Dom, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray to with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints have pleased you throughout the ages. We may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.